Okay, and then uh, I know Mr. Chavez has a question, but I came in in the middle, but I think that we skipped the Department of Finance giving an, an overview of rationale of the 1.7 million. Thank you. Corrine Hansen, Department of Finance. Um, so what we're requesting here is $1,749,000 to create a middle school activity center at the School for the Deaf in uh, Fremont. And the, there was a question posed in the analysis for, by the subcommittee. And I just wanted to address that and point out that we do feel that this is vital. These students live in the cottages during the week. They're not able to go home, so they need a place where they can gather and, and communicate. And LAO pointed that out as well. In their testimony, we also feel that the location is important because where this middle school activity center would be built is close to where they live, so it creates um, or it prevents some safety concerns that it could happen if they would have to go further across campus. We also think that it's one of the most cost-effective ways to build it. It would be replacing a modular building with a permanent structure, um, which would have a longer lifespan, so you would get more bang for your buck. And we also think the timing of building something now is vital because they don't have an activity center where they can congregate. And we also believe the function and the responsibility of the middle, the middle school activity center would be necessary. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chavez? Yeah. I'd like to follow up on your question about the number of students. What, what is the population in the state of California for children who are deaf? Do we have an idea of uh, What's the need is? Scott Kirby, Director, State Special Schools and Services Division. In the state of California, we have 17,000 students that are deaf and hard of hearing that are school age 3 to 21. And the State Special Schools offers a placement option for those 17,000. Uh, again, those 17,000 students that are deaf and hard of hearing are along a range of hearing levels, uh, all the way from hard of hearing to significant hearing loss that require specialized services. The state special schools offers those specialized services in what we call a language-rich environment where we teach through a, a mode of communication of ASL. Not all students learn through ASL. Some students that have residual hearing can succeed in an environment that is not as isolated or secluded as a state special school, but a state special school is a necessary component in the spectrum of placement services so those students can be successful. Speaking of the spectrum of services. Yes. And you have 17, approximately 17,000 young people. Yes. Uh, and we're servicing 900. Do you feel like we're meeting the, the needs of the state with this 900? Because the other, assuming 16, 1,600 children are being serviced in another program? Are we, is, is this, are we meeting the need for these children? I, requirement? I believe very strongly that we're meeting the needs and more that for those students, for those 950 students that we service in the state special school, uh, uh, and I should emphasize, not, that's 950 is just those students in the school for the deaf, Riverside School for the Deaf, Fremont. Uh, if it, if I can say with all honesty, if the state special schools did not exist, those 950 would not be appropriately serviced. It would not go beyond a career path or college path. So you don't have a waiting list for to get into these schools? No, we do not. The, uh, the other question I have is, you know, I sit on the state allocation board and we allocate money out for facilities. What, is there a reason why we don't look at uh, these schools as far as bond matching funds, or is that because there is no bond initiative for the state schools to go against the, the state allocation board? Is there any reason not cons considered in funding that way? Alan, you want to address that? Can we invite Alan up for that? Gee, I asked a question. I didn't know. Who? Cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's great. That's going to be educated. I'm Alan Young with California Department of Education, State Special Schools. Uh, the state special schools are not approved in the legislation to request funding through the state allocation board for new construction. We were uh, approved a number of years ago for funding of modernization, and we did apply and use modernization funds to work on both uh, all three schools. But at this time, until there's additional uh, pupils added to our enrollment, we couldn't apply for any more modernization funds either. Does that answer your question? Yeah, but I also know the State Allocation Board, we have money, let's say, for seismic. We also have uh, money for pot of money for, uh, you know, safety issues in schools, separate from the major, you know, redoing a school or building a school. We, there's a pot there, and I just wondered why you're not in that 
well, pipeline for that. We, we've asked, we've uh, had funds for uh, career, uh, career tech equipment where it's like a 50% matching funds we've applied for. But for the most part, the funding formulas don't work out very well for the state special schools based on how the normal uh, school districts would apply for them. Uh, but again, uh, the new construction like the replacement of the uh, multipurpose act uh, activity center for the middle school, we can't apply for any funds from state allocation board. Okay, thank you very much. I just want to jump in on that. So there's 17,000 deaf, but there's also the school of deaf and blind. How many students are blind in this population in California? In the state of California, yeah. we have a spectrum also, a blind to visually impaired to low vision. In the state of California, we have about 6,000. 6,000. So 23, roughly 1,000 kids and 900. And I guess, that too, you may mention there's not a waiting list, but I bet you if you find a deaf or blind kid in Tracy or Bakersfield are here and ask them if they know about this program. They, they, they probably do not. And so I guess you know, oh, that that's the yeah. issue, too, is there, there are thousands of people that are not being served. And so I, I, I await, you know, the LAO uh, report on this because I, I think it raises fairness issues and, and, and uh, basically making sure that everyone in California who has a special need has a chance to have some type of service. Most of our programs or counties or LEAs in the state of California do, cannot offer those programs for students with low incidence disabilities of deaf, hard of hearing, blind, and visually impaired because they're too costly, uh, because they have so few students in their county program or the LEA program to uh, initiate a program. Therefore, they really depend on a state special school to provide those services. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to hold this issue open. Uh, no other, no more questions. We're, we're going to jump now. To, yes, we're, we're holding it open. Okay, I just, is it okay if I make a comment? Sure. On, so Ryan had mentioned um, the issue about requiring the state special schools to kind of provide at least $1.8 million of their support budget for deferred maintenance projects. Um, and I just wanted to note that none of the other agencies that are receiving part of this $500 million under this control section have anything in their language that requires them to spend some of their support funny, funding for additional maintenance. Um, and the state special schools have annually spent over $200 million a year, um, and we just don't think there's a need to hold them to a higher standard than the other departments. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with, with that, we're going to go back and uh, address two issues that we had a vote, so a call on these two items. The first is, uh, did we split the vote on that? Not on that, but on the And on the vote, we did the whole package? Mm -hmm. Okay, so issue number, issue number one, the vote only Department of Education technical adjustments to the trailer bill. Uh, Ching? Kim? Okay, and then secondly, on the Department of Ed, CDE, State Operations, items two through eight that we listed out separately. Ting? Aye. And McCarty? Aye. Yeah. Item one. And then lastly, item one, the CDE staff recommendations for 105,000 for three positions. McCarty? Aye. And Ting. Okay. Thank you. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, sorry. We did forget. So thank you. Thank you. Half of California School Boards Association. And we wanted to support the uh, funding for the state special schools maintenance and the facility. This is a unique facility that is a statewide resource. Parents send their children away to these schools. They need to feel comfortable that they have a quality place, a safe place, a place that's going to meet their students' needs to send them away from home. These are tremendously expensive programs if we should try to run them at the local district level. So we think this is a good investment. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that issue again is held open. Now we'll go to issue number five. Charter School Startup Grants. Okay. 
Welcome back. Okay, please proceed. Uh, good morning, Cheryl Adab with the Department of Finance. The governor's budget includes $20 million in one-time funding for charter startup grants for operational startup costs. Um, this funding is intended to help with the loss of the federal fund grants for the same activities. Um, while this program has similar activities and funds, um, these are targeted towards specific programmatic enhancements to low-income um, charter schools and also to charters or to counties that have few or no charter schools. Also, we're in trying to ensure that there's timely release of funds. Um, what we would know also is that these funds are supposed to be paired with the federal funds of $35.4 million carryover. Thank you. Deborah Brown on behalf of State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tom Torlickson. We just note a couple of um, uh, differences in the between the trailer bill proposal and the, the federal public schools uh, charter grant, which is um, uh, concern, uh, I shouldn't say concerns, but differences around eligibility. The, the trailer bill, um, to be aligned with the uh, federal grant would need to uh, further define uh, the eligibility criteria. The funding amount is different, um, inc including the um, having a funding cap in the trailer bill, but um, allows the federal program allows for different um, different levels of funding. Uh, planning time is different, and the priority or target population uh, in in the two proposal in the uh, trailer bill versus the federal grant are different. Um, also, in order to prioritize applications, the language which must provide additional details such as cutoff dates so that the applications can be, be reviewed, ranked, and provide additional application periods for unallocated uh, funds. So uh, again, some more different differences around the payment schedule, the use of the funds, and um, uh, issues around double dipping. I'd also know that there's the, the um, potential for another round of funding to go out, um, and we're currently working to see if we can get a um, approval to do a, a fourth round of, of funding, and we'll provide an update once we know that to the committee. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. Ken Capon with the Analyst's Office. Um, I think as you heard from the discussion here, the state is in a little bit of an awkward position here. The state has had access to this federal grant since 1995. It's been a fairly important um, component for many charter schools meeting their startup costs. Um, the state recently, last year, was not accepted to receive another round of this funding. Um, for a variety of um, uh, reasons, in, in part it had to do with some data limitations related to the suspension of the API, some preferences in the federal grant program for states that had not previously received an award. Um, various factors were at play there. Uh, the state uh, r right now is awaiting the results of a comprehensive evaluation of the federal program. Um, that I think that evaluation is in the final stages and should be re released uh, relatively soon. Um, and that should give the state a little bit more information about how well the federal program has worked um, and what the state might want to continue in the future. So given that the state doesn't know at this time when the next federal app funding round will be, whether the state will receive those funds, and even how well the federal current federal program has been working, the state is in a little bit of a difficult position. I, I think the administration uh, gave you some good sense of why the state might want to um, provide some state funding. It would allow these startup grants to continue at least on a temporary basis. That said, we think there's a lot of key information that you still need before you can make a decision on this proposal. Uh, one has to do with the amount of federal carryover remaining in the program. Uh, what we've heard from the Department of Education is that there might be around 35 million, but to access that funding, the department has to take some specific steps with the federal government and we think you should hear uh, a, a firm commitment from the department regarding whether that will happen and how much funding is available. Uh, the other issue concerns uh, some detail we think you still need from the administration. Um, the, the trailer bill language is not yet clear what charter schools would need to do to apply th for this funding or, for example, how they could use the startup funding. And we think you should look for that detail in the May revision before you make a decision on this. Okay, thank you. Department of Education. Oh, sorry, I guess I, I jumped ahead, so I already spoke. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, three. Perfect. Okay. Comments from members? 
No. Okay. Public comment. Thank you, Ernie Silva for Sciatech. We're yeah, in we'll ask you for uh, for one minute or less yep. because it's your lobby day and you have a lot of people here. All right. So <laughs> not mine. But, it was uh, just so. Uh, Sciatech Network of Dropout Recovery Schools. Um, we're fully in support of this of this item. The, the the funny, not so story is that the secretary's office, the feds, um, blocked our uh, application for a startup grant because in California we serve re-engaged youth in partnership with career development programs, ironically including Department of Labor programs. It was Cindy and Nick at the Department of Education that went to bat for us and Congressman Lowenthal um, to make this happen. We think this is a great program. It's an important program, and we uh, su completely support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Um, Moira Top on behalf of the California Charter Schools Association. We do appreciate your indulgence uh, today for our lobby day. Um, but over 150,000 students in California are on charter school waiting lists. Um, charter school funding and startup funding is essential to ensure that uh, the growth occurs to meet the demands for these uh, students on waiting lists. Brand new charter schools face considerable one-time uh, funding needs in order to begin operation. You'll hear that from some of the actual operators today. And, and lastly, just to, to keep it brief, Mr. Chairman, um, you'll hear a bit from folks about whether or not this is a federal backfill. And we would strongly uh, say that no, it is not. This was not a federal program. What this is, is a fe it was a federal grant to which the state received monies to fund a state program. And it's funded the program very well over the last 20 years. Um, and we think that, uh, like I said, in order to continue to the pipeline for these students who are sitting on waiting lists today, desperately wanting these educational opportunities, that this, school, that this funding is vitally needed, and we ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Eric Premack, Charter Schools Development Center. I'll concur with Moira's comments and simply add that the feds have changed the criteria for the federal grant program to severely disadvantage California. When uh, In the prior round, when they scored under the new criteria, we scored 15th out of the 15 states that were scored. And uh, they're going to use the same criteria going forward. So I think it's extremely unlikely that we will get federal funds from this program uh, for the foreseeable future. So we strongly support uh, the administration's proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Ron Rapp, on behalf of the California Federation of Teachers. We oppose this proposal. We don't believe that the state should be backfilling federal dollars. California lost their grant because of a lax charter school law. I say before we uh, decide to give startups, start uh, new charter schools, we should improve the charter school law. So we are uh, speaking in opposition, and uh, we requ request that you reject this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Tristan Brown with the California School Employees Association. I'd like to echo the comments made by the uh, Federation of Teachers. Uh, we, too, uh, agree with staff comments that uh, there is a need for a long-term solution on how to deal with this issue. Uh, the charter schools do enjoy a tremendous amount, if not maybe unprecedented amount of leeway, uh, yet the lack of oversight is something that the federal government has cited, as well as many other studies on the charter school system. We believe that uh, one-time money might be better spent on oversight uh, improving how charter schools receive oversight or many other programs within Prop 98 that uh, are of deserving, have deserving needs as well. So with that, we also urge uh, a different path. Thank you. I'm Peter Stone, the Chief Business Officer from River Charter Schools, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. River Charter Schools has a school, Delta Elementary Charter School in Clarksburg, nine years. It's a K-6 charter school. It's full and historically has had 18% wait list. Most of the students on the wait list are in West Sacramento and those parents and other parents asked that we replicate our very successful school. We did so and formed Lighthouse Charter School which is finishing its first year and I can just say it was exceedingly instrumental that we were able to get the startup grant that enabled us to get infrastructure, furniture, technology, and things such that when the teachers showed up, they would be equipped to properly teach and hit the ground running. Um, with the large wait list in California and the potential for our replication and the replication of other charter schools, we strongly recommend the approval of this item. Thank you. 
Good morning, Cesar Lopez, Apex Academy uh, Charter High School in Hollywood. So we are a single high school in Hollywood serving the dropouts, pushouts, non-grads, uh, pregnant teens, foster kids, homeless kids, everyone basically that just simply can't find their way into any other school. And that uh, as a single school, we have a waiting list. We have hundreds of students on the streets who nobody wants. And this bill, this additional funding will provide us that opportunity to continue our growth, expand opportunities for those students that nobody wants. And believe me, there's hundreds, if not thousands of them. And in Hollywood, you've got to come down and check out the homelessness. It is insane. Please support this bill. Thank you. Hello, good morning. My name is Alfonso Paz, and I'm also the co-founder and co-director of Apex Academy in Hollywood. And I'd just like to add what my partner said. My waiting list, nobody wants to take a picture with the students. But in the state of California, every one of them deserves an education. So I do it in favor of the bill. Good morning, Chair, committee members. Alfredo Rubalcaba, Chief External Officer for Magnolia Public Schools. We proudly serve over 3,400 students across the great state of California. I work directly with 5,000 families. Uh, the startup, startup grants have greatly benefited Magnolia over the past decade. We've been able to buy instructional materials, classroom equipment, and technology. At our school at Bell, we have, over the last four years, over 600 families on waiting lists that haven't been able to come to our schools. I've been working with them every day to bring more uh, Magnolia schools to our communities. These startup grants would serve that purpose in helping us in that task. And for that reason, we are in full support of startup grants for charter schools. Thank you. Good morning. Marco Petruzzi, CEO of Green Dot Public Schools. We have 18 schools serving 11,000 students, um, all uh, Latino and African American from very low income uh, communities in Los Angeles. Uh, all 18 schools have uh, been able to open because of charter school startup grants. Uh, we need to hire uh, people ahead of time. We need to train them. We need to buy computers. We need to buy desks. Uh, we need to buy instructional materials for day one. Only after we have ADA, we receive operating funding from the state. So uh, there is no other way for us to actually uh, prepare for school opening unless we have this char uh, charter school startup grant. So we urge you um, to uh, support uh, this funding. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Denise Patton, the Executive Director of San Jose Charter Academy located in West Covina, California. We're a TK-8 charter school with an enrollment of 1,230 students with 2,400 on the waiting list. We are, we are a previous recipient of the state grant in 1998. Startup funds were crucial in our ability to provide extensive staff professional development and startup materials and curriculum. When we opened our doors in 1998, 71% of our students were reading below grade level. We are now ranked in the top 5% of all elementary schools in the state of California. These startup dollars were vital investments in the hundreds of students who have walked through our doors, as well as the thousands that are waiting for their own children. Charter School. Thank you. My name is Ruth Dutton, and I'm a charter school founder here with my daughter Harper, who attends at Sycamore Valley Academy in Visalia, California, and I'm a principal superintendent there. I opened the first autonomous charter school authorized by Visalia Unified in the fall of 2012, and it was only because of the federal PCSGP money that Sycamore Valley Academy now exists. Now in our fourth academic year, we serve 350 students and have about 150 on our wait list. We are a CDE gold ribbon school and have the highest CASPI scores of any LEA in Tulare County. In a few short months, when we submit our renewal petition, we will also submit a new charter petition to allow us to, to open a second K-8 charter in Visalia in the fall of 2017. We need the state of California to act now to provide public charter schools with public dollars to allow for the growth of our exceptional program so more of our community's children can access our high quality option and we can continue to model what is possible in public education, elevating expectations of all public schools. Please remember that those hardest hit by a lack of public monies to fund char charter startup are high need rural communities like mine. If we want to see rural communities experience the same benefits from public charter education as we've seen in urban areas, we must ensure public money can finance their launch. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members, Brendan Tuig on behalf of Ed Voice in support of the governor's proposal. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Dr. Kathleen Hermsmeyer, and I am the superintendent of the Springs Charter School Network of Schools. We have uh, River Springs Charter Schools, the largest charter school in California, single charter school, and it is in a countywide benefit charter in Riverside, California. And uh, the startup grant was instrumental for us to get started. We would not have been able to start without it back in 2005. And we have uh, 5,400 kids in Riverside County with 1,000 on the wait list. We have our other two charters both also have uh, wait list uh, students. And we are starting two new charters in the fall. And we are wondering how we are going to make the budget work without a startup grant. So that is very important to us. Thank you. Thank you.